Thank you all. All of you know that the International Forum for Promoting Homeopathy comprises of homeopathy lovers, students, and doctors. And we have three sessions every day. The first session of the day is already over in Hindi. That is from 7.30 to 8.30. And from 8.30 to 9.30, the international session in English. And from uh, 9.30 to 10.30, we have a local language session in Malayalam. Nowadays, we are able to upload our uh, video on the very next day itself so that those who miss the session can uh, watch it again on the YouTube by searching IAPH Homeopathy. Please subscribe uh, our uh, videos also, YouTube channel. Please subscribe. And uh, let me come to today's guest. As you all know, there is a very famous uh, guest that is Dr. Nikanj M. Trivedi. Uh, sir has completed M of uh, Homeopathy London uh, very recently and uh, uh, has, uh, has been there uh, in UK for the last uh, so many years and uh, as, uh, working in as uh, the director as well as the uh, physi chief physician at Artis Clinic UK and is uh, the latest name is Artis Advanced Clinical Homeopathic Center and uh, as you know sir has been treating a very very important uh, area in, in uh, infertility and the sir has present a written a lot of articles on that. And he is a fellow of British Institute of uh, Homeopathy. He is a fellow of Royal Society of Health. Uh, he is he has been awarded the Man of the Achievement in 2002. He is affiliated with the many homeopathy organizations around the world. He is a broad member, board member of Homeopathy of for Children in Charity Home in UK. And uh, uh, I, I, he has uh, treated more than 2 lakh patients uh, in the 43 years of his clinical career uh, uh, and uh, he has many patients on uh, international side that is USA, UK, Africa, uh, uh, Barbarian, Canada, Norway, Nepal and so many uh, particularly in the field of infertility and uh, he he has begun his career as a medical qualified homeopath, uh, ranked first in the university and has been practicing homeopathy since 1980 in India and from 2004 to in UK. I have so many things to add. Everything is there in the uh, poster of the day. Uh, so I am not narrating. So that will take so, more, so um, many uh, uh, more time. So let us uh, come to the subject today doctor will be talking about homeopathy in hydrosulfines is a very very important area uh, as you all know that uh, sir has presented so many sessions in this forum also so we can proudly welcome the guest of the day dr nikhilj m trivedi sir welcome sir thank you thank you very much yeah i'm audible can you yes, hear sir. me properly yes sir okay thank you yes our subject is hydrosalpings in homeopathy and homeopathy in hydrosalpings. How homeopathy can treat the hydrosalpings? Hydrosalpings is a part of infertility investigations. As you know well that I am practicing most in infertility, male and female part. So today we are going to discuss about the hydrosalpings and how homeopathy can treat. So once patient comes to you, patient is not knowing that what hydrosalping is. It always comes with the investigations. And that's why when I'm teaching over here, I always emphasize more on the clinical homeopathy. If we do more clinical investigations, then we can better treat the patient in a better way and Homeopathy can be acceptable universally. So here I am taking a permission to share my screen. Yes, am sir, I allowed sir. to Sir, you can share it now, sir.
seems to be a network problem there. We have a lot of doctors uh, specialized in uh, infertility and practicing uh, homeopathy for that. Uh, very recently, I also got a case uh, with, uh, within three months, we are able to give uh, the result. That is the speciality of homeopathy. So we, have, we need to take the case in detail and find and see what is uh, uh, the individuality of the patient, how it, he behaves and what are the things uh, that happened before marriage and what are the things uh, that works now. Uh, yes, sir, is there? Yes, sir. Please unmute, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Am I audible now? Yes, sir. That was a network problem. Yeah. Now I'm trying to share my screen with you. And once I share my screen, then we'll proceed further for the discussion on the hydrosol pings. Can you see? Yes, sir. Now it is yeah, fine, I, sir. Yeah. Okay. So the, to, today's topic is very sensitive topic: homeopathy in hydrosol pings. So first of all, let, an, let us understand the term hydrosalpings. Hydrosalpings, hydro, is related to the water, H2O. And when hydrogen combines with oxygen, it becomes water. And water is very, very essential part of our life. Water covers 71% of our surface and water is vital for all known form of life. Without water, life cannot exist. So prefix hydro in medical terms, denoting water or fluid. So we are using terms like hydrocephalus. Water means that is called the cerebrospinal fluid in brain, called the hydrocephalus. Water in pleura, pleural effusion, hydrothorax, hydronephrosis, it's abnormal accumulation of water in renal system, in kidneys, pelvis, and calysis, that turns to the hydronephrosis. Hydrocele, abnormal accumulation of water in testis, hydrosis means sweating, hyperhidrosis means excessive sweating. So all the hydro is related with the medical terms that what I have cleared over here. And now we are switching to the hydrosalpings. Life cannot exist without water, as I said earlier. And water having a two parts and power that one is the constructive power and one is destructive power. Constructive force of water always brings the wonders like ecosystem support, transportation, recreation like relaxation, swimming, boating, fishing, and surfing. These all are constructive aspect of the water. And the destructive aspect of the water as you know very well, that it's a disaster, like waterborne diseases, storm, tsunami, etc. So water can be useful and water can be destructive as well. And today we'll be witnessing the destructive force of water 
and role of retention of water clued on fallopian collection of or accumulation of fluid in fallopian tube we call the hydrosulfics and abnormal accumulation of fluid in fallopian tube we call the hydrosulfics so let us define what is hydrosulfings hydrosulfings is a condition in which one or both fallopian tubes we call the unilateral or bilateral if it is the, if the water is accumulated in a single tube it is called the unilateral and if it gets accumulated in both the side we call the bilateral which connects the ovaries to the uterus and it becomes blocked and fill with a water fluid so how this hydrosulfings diva the term hydro means water and salpings refers to the fallopian tube this water retention can cause the fallopian tube to swell and sometime it results and it interferes with the fertility issue and that's why female fertility factors we should evaluate and now we are coming to it as well so here just i'm showing you the picture about the normal tube how the normal tube looks like and how the hydrosulfings the accumulation of water in the tube looks like so these are the two picture which differentiate from the normal and abnormal and this is a usc ultrasound of dilated fallopian tube so when our patient when we send our patient for the usc when patient undergo this investigation the radiologist or the sonologist give the opinion after taking a slide uh, after taking a plate and in plate we can see the dilated portion of the tube so this is a vital part of the investigations of the fallopian tube this condition that occurs when a fallopian tube is blocked and fills with the serous or clear fluid near the ovary that is called the distal end to the uterus and the block tube may become substantially distended giving the tube a characteristic cucumber like twisted balloon like appearance saucer like appearance or retort like shape so here if you see here where i'm moving my cursor then you can see the whole tube has become saucer like or cucumber like we know hydrosulfing is a blocked dilated fluid filled fallopian tube usually caused by previous tubal infection and what type of infection that is pelvic inflammatory disease or sexually transmitted disease like gonorrhea or chlamydia or any injury when surgeon is doing any exploratory laparotomy or laparoscopy at that time if some injury occurs to the tube then it turns to a reactive phenomena any serous membrane when it met with the any infection serous membrane is starting secreting a fluid and that's why that fluid gets accumulated in a hydrosulfix in a tube and then we call the hydrosulfix so there is an abnormal accumulation of serous fluid in fallopian tube which results into the infertility so we have to understand the difference between certain terms salpingitis means the inflammation of the fallopian tube it's a simple inflammation there is no accumulation of any water hematosalpings means the accumulation of blood in fallopian tube 
and bios helpings mean accumulation of pus in the fallopian tube. So these are the difference we should understand. And sometimes it helps in a differential diagnosis as well. Coming to the statistics, as earlier I explained about the infertility factors, which relates with the female. So 30% of infertility cases involves problem related to the fallopian tube. And we call them tubal factors. And hydrosalpinx is present in approximately 10 to 20% of the cases. So it's a hidden thing. It always coming up with the investigations. Patient never comes to us with a complaint that, oh, doctor, I got a hydrosalpinx. When we try to investigate the patient, then and then we can't come to know about the condition. Patient is always asymptomatic. Asymptomatic means no symptoms at all. Some patient may complain of the recurring lower abdominal pain or pelvic pain. When patient try to bend, when, try, when patient try to sneeze, when patient tries to cough, at that time patient is experiencing the lower abdominal pain. When we take a history at that time, we always get a history of some infection that is leading to the pelvic inflammatory diseases. In some patient with the investigations, we may find STD like chlamydia or gonorrhea. Patient have a complaint of vaginal discharge and that discharge is always viscid, ropey, stringy, stretchy, thread-like. So all this description of the discharge, when we repertorize the case, is quite useful and quite helpful. And that's why while taking the history, we always ask the patient about the type of discharge and nature of discharge. Most women, don't notice any symptoms except for inability to get pregnant. After having a four or five years of marriage and when they think to start a family and when they try to visit the consultant, gynecologist, doctors, then with the help of investigations, they come to know that they're having a complaint or symptoms of the condition we explained is hydrosalpinx. So important thing to remember to ask in history taking, when we are taking a history of the patient, these are very, very important things to remember and to ask the patient regarding any abdominal surgical manipulations. As I earlier told that any exploratory laparotomy, laparoscopy, or any other investigations which has caused some manipulations with the uterus, tubes, or uterine ligaments, which has resulted into a hydrosalpings. And what are the investigations and what are the things which instigate or which initiate all this condition, that is one is the laparoscopy. Also, we should not forget to ask about the history of ruptured appendicitis. Many patient having a history of endometriosis, presence of endometrial tissue outside the uterine cavity. And any abdominal surgery, which has caused some trauma, some injury to the fallopian tube or surrounding viscera. So these are the important things to remember while taking the history. Sometimes sometime patient 
might not feel comfortable or sometimes patient might not remember to give all this history when patient comes to us for a treatment of infertility or with, with a treatment of hydrosolvings. But we should ask them that these are the conditions we should not forget. Now, how it affects the woman's health? When you are treating a hydrosolving, when you know the condition, when you having investigations in your hand, USC results or HSC, so how you handle and how it affects the woman's health, that is also very important. So first of all, if hydrosalping is not well treated, it results in infertility. And at the time of investigations of infertility, we find hydrosalping. That is one of the factors why patient is not getting pregnant. So it increases the risk of miscarriage. And it also can increase the risk of tubal pregnancy, ectopic pregnancy. Because there is a convolution in the tube. Tube is loaded with the fluid. So lumen of the tube has become narrow. And meanwhile, may, all the pregnancy is being taken place in the tube. So when patient having a hydrosalping chances of ectopic pregnancy is very, very, very high. And new research suggests it decreases the success rate of IVF. So if your patient is intent to go for an IVF, and when you know that patient having a hydrosalping, at that time you should inform and you should advise the patient that first clear this infection, make your fallopian tube normal, and then you can go for IVF. Otherwise, you might end up with an accident. Because when patient having a hydrosalping and if patient underwent IVF, the serous fluid from the tube can flow backward. That is called the retrograde flow of the serous fluid. And which in which creating or which increases the chances of infection or unhealthy environment in the developing, for the developing embryo. So we should be very, very careful when patient having a hydrosalping, patient having a uh, intention to go for IVF. And if we advise our patient that first you clear the hydrosalpings with the help of homeopathy, then the chances of success rate of IVF are very, very So how to diagnose? Nowadays, in homeopathy, investigations has become very vital. The reason is that if you investigate your patient, then after treatment, you can compare the result. And majority of the homeopaths are doing to investigate their patient. So first of all is ultrasonography, ultrasound that we have seen earlier in beginning of the session. I shown the slide that how the fallopian tube looks like when patient in the hydrosalpings. Another investigation is hysterosalpingogram. With the Rubin scanula, when we inject the dye in the uterus just to see the Free spillage on either place right. There is some network problem. Please wait. So I will be joining shortly.
Yaşılıkaş. Esar Dönd. Esar. Please reshare, sir. Yeah. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay, again, I'm sharing the screen from where we left. Okay, we were talking about the ultrasonography. We talk about the HSC, that is the hysterosalpingogram and laparoscopy. Laparoscopy is very, very important. And in laparoscopy, gynecologists are using the methylene blue. And sometimes some patients are reacting to eat. And that's why also patient is developing a hydrosalpings that I have seen in many patients. And laparotomy, that is called the exploratory laparotomy. And with the exploratory laparotomy, everything can be seen by gynecologist. So when all this thing has been done, like USC or HSC or laparoscopy or laparotomy, so patient is coming to you with a definite diagnosis of hysterosal. patient is coming to you with a clear-cut diagnosis of hydrosalpings. So hydrosalpings refers to massive distension of the fallopian tube caused by accumulation of the fluid. It results from occlusion of the distal end of the tube, usually by chronic infection, and tube initially thickens from inflammatory and then it leads to the fibrosis. Accumulated fluid within the tube, the, whatever fluid has been accumulated in the tube, that is causing a distension of the tube. And with rising pressure inside the tube, in the lumen of the tube, the muscular coat gradually withers away and the entire tube expands into a retort shape, sausage shape, cucumber shape, bag of fluid. So this all about basic anatomical, pathological, and etiological background of a hydrosalpings. Now we are coming to homeopathic aspect. Homeopathically, when patient comes to you with the piles and piles of files, those patients are putting all the files on your table. The doctor, can you please check all this thing and can you please guide me? What should I do? So we are taking history and we are also checking all the investigations that what patient has undergone. And after that, we are evaluating patients on homeopathic aspect. And as our master, Dr. Haneman, has explained us that physician should be a good observer. So with the skill of observation, we look at the patient to find the constitution. So patient having a hydrosalpings, they are more prone to having a hydrogenoid constitution or leukophlegmatic constitution. Patient having a tendency to retain water. That's why they retain water in the tube. Now we are coming on the homeopathic aspect. So we are analyzing the patient on our homeopathic way. Diathesis is scrofulous, means swelling of the organs. Myosomes is syphilitic. And thermal reaction is patient is susceptible to cold. Patient is highly susceptible to cold. So 
So this all about the homeopathic evaluation. And when hydrogenoid leukophagmatic constitution comes to our mind, the immediate your mind starts thinking about the remedies. And the first remedy comes to our mind is calcarea car. As we all know very well about the drug picture of the calcarea carbis, patient is fair, fat, flabby. Patient gets easy relapses. Patient gets interrupted convulsions. Persons of crophulous type. Patient takes cold easily with increased mucus secretion. So this increased mucus secretion is very, very important pathological key. As we saw in early slide, that discharge is thick, viscid, stringy, thread-like. Calcarea patient get tendency to retain water. Calcarea patient having get swelling of the glands. Inguinal and mesenteric glands swollen and painful because of the PID, because of the pelvic inflammatory disease because of the inflammation. Patient cannot wear tight clothing around waist. You will find all these symptoms in a boric materia medica. And calcarea patient having a milky white leukorrhea. Calcarea patient having a tendency to develop a sterility with a copious menses. So we should always keep calcarea in mind with leukophlegmatic constitution. Another remedy comes to our mind is Cilicia. Why Cilicia? Because Cilicia can stimulate the organism to reabsorb the fibrotic conditions and scar tissue. You can take an experiment by taking a bucket full of silica, sand, and just pour the water in that. If you visiting the beach, when the waves comes on the shore, and waves, once they go back, you can see how quickly the water gets absorbed in a sand. So this is a doctrine of signature of the silicia. And similia similibus curentia. On this principle, if we administer silicia, the patient of hydrosalpings, patient of hydrosil, because I have experienced in my practice the pathology of the tube. In the tunica vaginalis of testis is the same. So the effect of the medicine is the same. Any patient having a varicocele, male patient, any male patient having a hydrocele, any female patient having a hydrosalpings, if we administer silicia, it gives marvelous result. And after a certain period of time, if you send your patient again for USC, means ultrasound, you will be able to see the remarkable difference with that indication of silicia or administration of the silicia. Second thing about the silicia, silicia is also improving the tubociliary action when patient having a hydrosalping, when there is a water retention in the tube, and uh, if you give silicia, silicia removes the water from the tube, but simultaneously it improves the ciliary movement inside the tube. Because with the ciliary movement, the eggs move. So silicia having a very good action on the tubociliary mucosa.
third one, sorry, third one is thiocin immune. Mustard oil. Another name is Rodelin. The first sentence in Boric Materia Medica is written is a resolvent, externally and internally. So when thiocinaminum administered in a 3x potency with any patient in a hydrosalpings, it will make a wonders. I am using maximum thiocinamium in my practice. It also helps in dissolving scar tissue, tumors, and large glands. Say, for example, any patient with lymphadenopathy, if you treat the cause, and if you give thiocinamium in a 3x potency, lymphadenopathy vanish very quickly. Lumps, stricture, Additions, urethral stricture. I had one patient, urethral stricture. So when patient was urinating at that time, flow was just splitting in a two part. And history was a catheterization. After catheterization, male patient developed a short of a double string. Patient doesn't want to undergo another investigations for the cystoscopy. And I gave a thiocinamium in a 3x potency morning and evening for three weeks. And I told patient that once you feel that now you have given only single strong stream of the flow of urine, you just stop. Oh, just to dissolve that fibrosis. This is wonderful remedy. Opacities, corneal opacities like cataract. If we give thiocinamine along with senior area, it helps to resolve the cataract to a certain extent, not with all the patients, but to some patients. So these are the wonders of all these remedies and belladonna. We can't forget belladonna. Belladonna, as you know, that having a cardinal signs of inflammations like dolar, calor, rubber, and tumor. Dolar means pain, rubber means redness, calor means heat, and tumor means swelling. So these are the cardinal sign of inflammation. So when patient having a issue of PID and patient, when patient having a hydrosalpings along with this, and if you give a belladonna, immediately it gets resolved. And at last, I would like to share one case. This patient, I presented this case earlier with the infertility session. This patient was diagnosed with a query hydrosalpings because right sided Please wait. Some network problems are still there. at the patient's face, typical leukophlegmatic constitution you can see, typical calcarea patient. So I have combined calcarea and cilicia both, and it has made a marvelous results after IVF. So this is all about 
the books which I wrote, and these are available for you. The repertoire of infertility, infertility, material medical sexual disorder, sperm disorders, and homeopathy. And if you want to ask me any questions, I'm available here. So I'm ending up my session. And I'm highly thankful to Dr. Dhanesh, Dr. Manoj, Dr. Kuryat. Yes, uh, it was really a very good session, sir. Uh, let's wait uh, for uh, the guests to join because uh, still there is some network problem. Even in the UK, the network is just like what is happening here every day. We, we, we This is a common problem. Yes. Yeah. And Dr. will be joining shortly. Yes, somebody, madam, we let us wait uh, still our guest is joined. You can. I think that madam can share some experience meanwhile. Yes, sir. One of the most experienced hands in the FPH in the yeah. in case of Yes. What is the uh, third is correct for this application and all? We, I used to give Thiosinamine 3x. I used to give three days, five grain each, three three times a day. I used to give for one month. Then again, I will uh, after this uh, can we can very well understand that uh, the attention is gone. Uh, the attention of your ovaries also it can be removed by this iodine, and uh, as well as silicia, silicia also. Silicia I used to give three x bio combination. Then uh, I will increase the uh, potency. What is it is correct. Then I want to uh, know uh, where he'll, his book will be available. Madam, uh, very much. Please wait. Yes, is uh, uh, yeah. Let him uh, let uh, Doctor Nigunska. We will yes, ask. Yes. Anyway, I will yeah. please make some arrangements or available the information of Ranesh. I think you can provide some contact number to Dr. Amade Amber, so she will ask directly to Dr. Yes, yes, already uh, the numbers have been shared in our posters, but nobody okay. is talking on those things, so that's yes. the problem. Yes, uh, yes. join now, yes. Almost all uh, 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 posters were given numbers. Even in the flyer itself, uh, there is a number. There so is a number. Got, yes. Yes, uh, yes, from Yes, yes. The so yes, that the one, I think. Yes, let us see. Yes, so audio is not connected now. Yes, yes. No, it's, uh, still there is network problem. That's why. Uh, yes, yes. At least we can console. In the UK also, network problem is there, as yes. in India. <laughs> Danish was laughing, <laughs> telling that. We, see, if the light is off, we will just see to the neighbor's house whether the light is gone there or not. Then if it yes, is gone, yes. we will we consult. Yes, uh, yes. We will be yes, thinking sir, that, uh, that uh, if the, the trouble will be ours only. That's why, not uh, because of jealousy. Yes, uh, yes somebody like uh, sir has joined, you can ask the question directly. Uh, yes, 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 sir. Dr. Neguj, yeah. uh, it was a very good section. Thank you. Um, I want to know one thing. Where will your book will be available? It's available you on know, Amazon. Publication. It, it, Pardon? It's a Trafford publication. Trafford, USA. Trafford, USA. Oh. Yeah. Uh, how will you get it? Uh, you can order on the Amazon. It's available on Amazon as well. Amazon, okay. Yeah. Uh.
sir what is your attitude uh, will you, in those will you in put the names in chat box also dr nigunj sorry the book's name uh, will you put in chat box yeah book sure names. i will put it yeah 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 okay and that uh, publishers um, address also okay yeah. Uh, sir, in the uh, case presented yes, here, uh, mm -hmm. you have uh, uh, given the medicine to the man who was suffering from this uh, hydrosalpins, but uh, in the meantime, uh, it was a IVF. Uh, what was the reason for that? No, patient uh, patient went for IVF. Patient was not succeed in IVF. Oh yes, sir. Exactly. That's yeah. why. That's patient way, had yeah. wasted. Patient had wasted about four five lakhs rupees. Okay, patient sir. remained unsuccessful, and then patient came to me for homeopathic oh. treatment. And after that, I treated the patient on homeopathic ground. I opened the tube with the intrauterine use of homeopathic medicine, that is silicia and the thiocyanamium. I opened the tube, and then patient became pregnant. Uh, sir, uh, there is a question. A role of metrodial remedies. Sorry, role of? Uh, there is one question in the chat box. Mm -hmm. Somebody was asking. A role of metrodial remedies, sir. And Dr. Gias, you can uh, directly ask the question if you raise the hand. Yeah, just a minute, I'm writing this repertory of infertility. Okay, sir. Okay, and, sir. Uh, and Dr. Manoj, in the meantime, you can talk. Yeah. Yes, definitely a nice presentation, especially when you indicate the the, the, the constitution, hydrogen and constitution, then the diathesis scrofulus and the miasm disability. That is a perfect way to, to control such cases. I think a lot of tuberculosis is there, a tubercular miasm in almost all cases. That will often lead in the hydrosalpis condition. As a bio this will be given more diseases, that will often lead to hydrosalpis. Moreover, if the steward process a nice description is given the presence of psychotic miasm. The roses in her cheeks are faded away. And the doctor says you have an addition to the pelvic organs and a goodbye to all hopes of family. In that way, they beautifully describe a steward process, the presence of psychotic miasm in the female genitalia. A nice presentation. I always know about Dr. Potent is potential. Wonderful presentation. Then what about the potency you have given cases calcarea carb and silicia? So initially I started with the 200. Yeah. Calcarea I started with the 200. And okay. silicia I started with the 12x. 12x, okay. Yeah. And slowly, slowly hmm. I increased the potency. So I reached to the calcarea 1M. Yeah. How much awesome. Yes. 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 Almost all the polycrits remedy I'm using that I'm a bit skeptic about using a new remedies. Because nowadays proving has gone such a in a different way that everybody can prove anything like cotton, plastic, Coca-Cola, what not. And really it is yes, really it has causing a short of short of a harm to our homeopathy. So how you can prove the sunlight, moonlight, unized remedy? I have used that in a, a plastic anemia. I got the result. But uh, long back, long back, I, this is a very uh, interesting story that Chris Wilkinson from UK, he somehow or other may, uh, proved the Venus. He sent the alcohol to the NASA and from the NASA, I don't know how we, it's a very big story, but I got that Venus liquid. And you know very well in astrology that Venus is a Shukra and Shukra is influencing yeah. the Shukra Anu. 
that is sperm. Mm. And that Venus has really gave a good results with a patient of hezospermia. So oh. some medicines, yes, I, I do agree that it has been proved in a right way, then it has given a good result. But nowadays proving has gone so different way. So it is questionable to use it or not. So in case of metrodonial remedies, I have not used and uh, I'm frank with you people that I'm not going to use it as well. Yes, and Dr. Bob, Lee. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Uh, I'm I'm uh, from Malaysia. I'm Bob Lim, and uh, to Hello, today webinar it has been a very very uh, detailed and technical, and uh, started with the anatomy, explained very well, excellent about the hydrosaphine, which is the blockage of the uh, polyphenol tube uh, with the serous fluid, and. Uh, we have prescribed, uh, suggested two remedy, which is uh, sal silicia and uh, the thionacinum, is it? Thio, thiocinaminum. Ah, thio, thiocinaminum. Uh, what is the uh, uh, potency that you have prescribed? And how long you can use in a 3x potency. 3x. 3x. How about 3X. Q? Q is irritant. What about silicia? Silicia, I have used in 12x potency. What is the highest potency you have used? In calcarea, I have used 1m potency, 10m potency, but silicia, I have not used. Maybe. Low potency. I have one up to 200 potency, but not more than that. Okay. Thank you very much. That is the very, very excellent. You are practicing in UK? Yeah, I'm practicing Leicester. I practiced in India for 25 years. After 25 years, I migrated in UK. And in UK, I'm practicing since past 20 years. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. So Amazing. It's a, yeah, it's a 45 years of my practice. Uh, sir, what is the precedent uh, in UK? Uh, sorry, sorry, sir. Uh, what is the present uh, trend of homeopathy in UK, sir? Uh, whether the new doctors or new uh, qualified doctors are coming there? Uh, Those who are coming from India to UK for any post graduation courses like uh, health management course and everything. They are not practicing homeopathy over here. They are doing a job somewhere else, but they are not, not practicing homeopathy. And nowadays, I was just explaining that why we have become homeopath. First of all, struggle for survival. We need our bread and butter. And everybody needs bread and butter. If homeopathy can't give you enough amount of earning to sustain yourself, then there is no point of doing homeopathy. Second thing, once you do homeopathy, means you have to prove yourself. So looking to your results, patients start coming to you. So these are the two important factors for a homeopathy in UK. And that's why majority of the homeopaths, those who are coming from India to UK, they are not practicing homeopathy. Is that there means... any, sir? Is there any licensing system there? Yeah. Uh, somebody coming over there and uh, start practicing? Uh, can anyone uh, practice like that, uh, or simply? No, we, no, no, no. No, in UK we have to register with a professional body. Which is the body, sir? Uh, just like uh, as I am a member of the Faculty of Homeopathy, they give you a registration number, just like our uh, Central Council of Homeopathy or State Council, like Gujarat Council of Homeopathy, System of Medicine. 
So when I pass, I register myself. I got my registration number. Here also the same thing is applied. So uh, homeopathic medical association is there. Society of homeopathy is there. Faculty of homeopathy is there. All the professional body, they regulate how to practice homeopathy. And it is very, very important. Without registration, you will not get the insurance. And without insurance, no one can practice. Oh, that's insurance a, is very, very important. Okay, sir. Is uh, anyone want to, is there anyone want to have a question or want to talk to Dr. Nikhil Sivaji, sir? Please raise your hand. Uh, only just a few minutes remaining. Sir, what is the present rent of youth in uh, this uh, infertility cases now in UK? Yes, infertility cases in UK are increasing. Why? Because of the stress. Stress level is very, very high. Sorry. Ah. Food is also causing a short of effect on the sperm, on the ovulation. Stress level is very high. And uh, on top of that, always there is a fear of responsibility. So all this causing a secretion of adrenaline and adrenaline is always killing the sperms and the ovum. High level of adrenaline. Okay, sir. So, now I... Which is, yeah. Uh, time has come up to wind up the session. I invite uh, Dr. Ramadevi Ambadi to say a word of thanks to the session. Dr. Ambadi. Please unmute. Yes. Dr. Trivedi, it was very, very nice uh, presentation. Um, Thank you. You are given so many and, uh, and we will uh, try your this books also. Uh, it was very, uh, I, I think it will be very useful for us. And thank you. Thank you a lot. You should please come again with the uh, sure. other books. Okay. Thank you. If Dr. Be, Ganesh will invite me, I'll come again. He's a boss. Okay. Uh, Dr. Uh, the platform sir. is always open for you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, this somebody, madam, is uh, one of the uh, super specialists in homeopathy in this infertility care in Kerala. She has uh, more than 2,000 case, successful cases uh, with her in infertility. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And they're one of her colleague uh, and friend, Dr. Shanda Jandran, is also having the same uh, number of successful cases. So uh, these uh, both these fellows I have are read about that. Yes, it's a very huge hospital in Kerala. Uh, no, they are they are running a private clinic and not in hospital. But uh, even in the government sector, we have a lot of successful cases uh, with them. Uh, even without paying a penny, yeah, people are getting such wonderful result in our government hospitals. Anyway, uh, thank you, uh, Ambadi Madam, uh, uh, Dr. Nikun Srivedi sir, and those who attend the session. Uh, Tomorrow, we will have a session from Dr. Beatrice Krishna, and she will be talking about uh, the management of skin complaints uh, with homeopathy part 7. Thank you all. Good night. It's over to Dr. Maria Marjon to moderate the Malayana session. Thank you all. Love me the rest, doctor.